good morning and welcome back to another cheap house video today. Now if you've watched any of my other films, you'll know that I like going to places in the UK where you can still get a house really cheap and checking those areas out and seeing what the house is like and what condition they're in. Now in today's film, I'm going to London to check out the cheapest houses that are still for sale in London in April 2023. So let's face it, the houses I'm going to view today are not gonna be cheap at all, but I'm extremely excited and interested to see what these houses are gonna look like. Houses that are in the range of 300 to 500,000 pounds. They're the houses that I'm viewing. That's as cheap as I could find at the moment. So yeah, let's do it. It's, what time is it? It's quarter to six in the morning. I'm just leaving Yorkshire to get the train to Manchester and then down to London. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Let's go see these cheap properties. Well, not so cheap properties, but properties. Right, so welcome to London. That took us about four hours and I've got no time to sightsee. I've got to get right to it. I've got to get to this first property viewing. It's in like half an hour. So let's figure out where that is. And um, yeah, let's get on the way. So I'd love to hear from people living in London. How much do you pay for rent? Do you own your own house? Are you planning on staying in London or selling up and making your millions? Let me know. So I used to live in London. I lived down here for about five years, from the ages of like 19 to 24. I went to uni down here and then I stayed down for a little bit longer afterwards. And I'm just not a big fan of the city, to be honest. I find it too noisy, too busy, too overstimulating, and mainly just too expensive. Too expensive to do anything, too expensive to live. You gotta to work too much. Not for me at all. And that all just came back to me then, on that tube that I just got on then. It was so hot, it was so busy. And it has that like screeching noise, the tube, and I just remember that every day on the tube, that screeching noise. Horrible. What, what perfect conditions to go view an overpriced house. So a quick little history now of the house price increase over the past 60 years in London. So going back to the 1970s, the start of the 1970s, house prices in London, the average, wasn't that much more than the rest of the country. You could get a house down here for five grand, 5,000 pounds. Then moving into the 80s, the average down here moved up to 37,000 pounds. Into the 90s, it was 84,000 pounds. The 2000s, 210,000 pounds. The 2010s, it hit 350,000 pounds for the average. And then in November 2022, it was 542,000 pounds, the average price for a house here in London. Sorry, the average price for a property. This video today, I'm only looking at houses, brick and mortar houses. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not looking at flats. And those prices I've just been talking about then is the price average for properties, including flats. If you take that away, if you just look at the houses, it rises massively. And also, I'm not looking at the suburbs of London. I'm looking at sort of central zones, one to five, not those areas going out to like Woking or uh, what's it called? The St. Albans, all them places, all them areas near there. I'm talking about central London zones, one to five houses. So yeah, once you take flats out the equation of those averages, it goes even higher. It goes crazy. The average house price in the west of London, the expensive west, is over a million pounds. And over to the east where we are now near Tottenham Way, it's 750,000 pounds for a house, the average price, which is just crazy. So yeah, let's go explore the first house today. So do you own or do you rent? I rent. You rent a property. Yeah. Whereabouts in London is it? In Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. How much do you pay per month, do you mind me asking? Uh, uh, 700 quid. 700 quid. Is it, is it just you in the place or are there a no, few of you? I have flatmates. Flatmates, yeah. How many is it? It's four of us. Nice. Are you planning on staying in London for a while? Uh, no, I'm hoping to move in for the next six months. Oh yeah, where to? Germany. It's cheaper to do everything over there, so why don't I stay here? Yeah. No. So the first house is just down here, I think. Numbers are 43, 75 on this road. Now this one's on auction. Guide price saying 300,000 pounds. Now it'll go for way more than that, I'm sure. But let's go and have a look. Let's see what it's like. Hopefully, I think the auction's on the 19th of this month. So I don't think I'll finish the film by then. So I'll be able to put in what they actually sold for, hopefully. So let's go have a look. boarded up real well this one no one's getting in there just gotta wait for the uh, guy now so yeah give me a few minutes and we'll go in so i just got chatting to the nice next door neighbor there 
and he said that this has been boarded up and no one's been in it for years. And I was asking him what he thought his house was worth right next door. He said he wasn't sure, but he said one just across the road, similar size, um, said it went for 500 grand recently. So 500 grand, wow. Another thing as well, so the houses that I'm viewing, as I say, I'm not viewing flats, just houses. And I also took out any houses that are leasehold, not interested in them. And also there were quite a few houses that were weird. It was for like over 65s or something. So I took them out as well. Um, so yeah, these are just some of the cheapest on the market at the moment. So here's the listing online for this property. And as you can see here, it's on for £300,000. Now this is an auction, so it probably will go for more than that. But let's get inside and have a look around. So as you go into the house, there is a room on the right, which could be a living room down here. Now, it wasn't in too bad shape. I guess the word to describe it would just be a bit grubby, a bit grotty. Just needs a proper clean up in here. And into the hallway again, there's a radiator off the wall there. And then going through, there's another room on your right. And it's kind of in the shape as the first room. There was a hole in the wall on the left here. And then down uh, by the window, it was just all a bit grotty again. Bit of damp, just needs a real good clean up in here. You can see as well some plants. No one's been here for a while. And there was a Bible quote on the wall, which was pretty freaky. Then through to the kitchen, which was really small. You've just got a counter on the left and a sink on the right. Again, just needs a total clear up in here. You can just see it's been left, just stuff on the walls. And I didn't realise as well until I was walking around, I looked up and there was just a hole in the roof. So that I'd need a fix as well. Going out into the garden. Now the garden was actually a good size. You just need to clear all that and you've got a really good space there. So that's decent. Then going upstairs, stairs just need a bit of work doing to them, but not much. And through to the bathroom. Now this is where that hole was, down into the kitchen. The floorboards were awful. I didn't want to walk in here at all. Didn't feel safe. The walls need a bit of work in here, a bit of damp in the roof there. And again, it just needs a bit of a clean up in here, you can see. And definitely the floorboards, they definitely need sorting. Two bed upstairs, so through to the left here, and probably the best room in the house here. Not much needed doing in here, really. It seemed all right walls need a bit of paint but the other bedroom up here was really bad so there was a leak in the roof and there was water on the floor here and as you can see just going around so much damp so much water damage on this roof you can just see bits are coming down it's cracking and it's really affecting all of the roof up here so there's definitely a problem with the actual roof then coming over here there was an interesting choice of wallpaper and a broken window over there and then just another bit of the roof which was in a bad way well, do you reckon that would be a new roof then it'd need? So there we have it, the first house. And that one, as I said, on for £300,000. But there was a builder in there, a guy looking around it as well, a builder, and I got chatting to him. Because I don't really know how much it cost to actually do it up, get it all fixed up nice. But as he was looking around, he just kept saying, that's another load of money, that's another load of money. So it'd be really interesting to see what that sells for online. As I say, the auction's going on the 19th of April, so... I'll make sure I put the film out after then so we can see what it went for. But yeah, way worse than the photos looked online. What I would say is though, nice garden. I mean, that garden was pretty big. Obviously it was totally overgrown, but like strip all that back. That's actually a decent sized garden. Uh, as the neighbor said as well, nice friendly area. So who knows, could be a decent house, but Jesus, 300,000 pounds guide price for that. So funny because some of the houses that I see up north that are going for like 15 grand are in way better condition than them ones. It's just so funny. Plonk them down in London and they go for that. Mad. On we go anyway. So the next house I'm going to, got a bit of time. It's down in uh, down near Brixton, I think. So yeah, try and speak to some people along the way and talk a little bit about the history of London, why it's so expensive. Here as well, just near that house I viewed, an abandoned pub, the railway. I wonder when that shut down, I'll try to find out. The railway in Tottenham. Even pubs in busy London are struggling to survive. Right, so we just got to Brixton. I had to get a, uh, a purchase I wasn't expecting, an umbrella. It was well nice when I was over in, uh, what was it? Come over here, it's pissing it down. But it's three pound for an umbrella, I'm happy with that. I'm fine spending that. I once had an idea, one of my, Many failed business ideas a few years back when I thought, you know what, it always rains in Manchester so I'll just buy loads of cheap umbrellas and just flog them on the streets when it's raining, I'll make a fortune. I nearly bought a thousand 
off Alibaba was online, but I thought I'd start with something like 50 small. Got 50, it didn't rain for like two months. I ended up just giving them all away. I didn't make anything. Probably my worst business idea, that. But this one, three pounds, sturdy, good. Right, in Brixton, on to the next house, which is, I'm pretty sure this is just one that's on for 500,000 pounds. Um, not auction, so just offers in the region of 500,000 pounds. So let's get down there and see what it's like. Not the one I'm viewing, but look at the state of this one. I don't know if it's being done up or left, but I'll try to get some shots. Brixton, this is a nice area. Look at the houses over there. Look at them. I bet they're worth a few, Bob. And these ones as well, really picturesque. So that derelict one I've seen there, down there. I bet that's, I bet that's worth a lot, even though it's a shell. Uh, so, uh, what's your name? My name's Jack. Nice to meet you, Jack. Uh, do you rent in London? I rent in London, You do? Yeah. How much do you pay, do you mind me asking? So, uh, we're a house of three and we are 2,500. Okay, I mean, oh, yeah. is, it decent, is it in Brixton, yeah? Uh, it's just up here, it's in kind of, yeah, just off Lockwood Junction by Ruskin Park. Nice, yeah. is that a good price around here, do you reckon? I think it is. I actually think it's it's for the for the area we're in, we're pretty, we've done pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Rent did, did get raised, um, what, this month? But it was only by like 150 quid, so it was, it's we didn't feel too, too hard done by, yeah. Are you planning on staying in London, or is the, are you from London, or are you planning on, Get a lot of people move out like yeah I'm, I'm, un, I'm unsure I kind of I, I do see myself leaving London at some point um, but not not for the next three four years because all my, all my friends live around London yeah yeah um, so if you could buy would you buy in London or would you probably look somewhere else I think I can I mean I, I, I yeah if I could I would but I don't think I'm earning enough yeah, to, to buy in London at the moment yeah. or anything like that so here is my second viewing and it's this property on the end here, which is on for five hundred thousand pounds, half a million pounds. That on the end, not an auction, just offers in the region of five hundred thousand pounds. If I could show you what a half a million pound house looks like up near where I live in Yorkshire, <laughs> compare it to that. Right, we'll just wait for the guy, then go have a look around inside. So here's the listing online for this property, and as you can see, it's on for half a million pounds. That's not an auction, that's just half a million pounds. And have a look at this as well, because it says average property prices in this area were 770,000 pounds. And then looking at flats alone, they had an average price of 580,000, and terraced properties had an average price of 1.14 million. So let's go have a look round. So this would be your living room, I guess. And there's not much to talk about in here, really. The walls were a bit messy. Some places worse than others. This bit definitely needed a replaster. I don't know how much of this room would also need a replaster. Through to the kitchen. And this was quite nice, actually. It had been done out nice, probably quite recently. It was quite small, but this was definitely the nicest room in the house, for sure. Then coming through to here, you had this sort of bit that had been built over the garden, this room that had been built over where the garden was, and it was so messy in here. There was definitely numerous leaks, so much mould growing, so much damp. You can just see the walls are really, really grimy, and there's stuff growing inside there, so much mould. There was this kind of like plastic sheeted roof, but yeah, you'd want to do something within here. This is the back door there, and again, just looks pretty damp and mouldy. You've also got this little room downstairs, which would need a lot of work doing to it, a lot of replastering done in here. Don't really know what you do with this room. You've also got a bit of the roof missing from there, but it's nothing too major, I guess. Now, going upstairs, and it's a three bed, but this first room I'm looking at is a little box room. Might be better used as a study or something. Nothing too bad up here, to be fair. Just a bit of work on the walls, really. But all the rooms up here were all right. Second bedroom up here, a bit bigger, and again, just needs a lot of snagging doing to it, a bit of plaster crumbling, paint crumbling, the walls just don't look in great shape, but it's nothing too bad. It's not going to be a big cost to do this up, although it's not what I picture when you think of a half a million pound house. Into the final bedroom up here, again, quite a nice room to be fair, there's just a little bit of work that needs doing on it, a little bit of paint job there, here's your view outside the window, going through to the bathroom. And it's just a small little bathroom, not much to say about it really. It's neat, it's tidy, but it's a small little bathroom. So there we have it inside a half a million pound house in London. When you think of a half a million pound house, you don't think of that, do you? How depressing. That's what half a million pounds can get you. Well, the guy said uh, 
nearby a house had sold two bed for six hundred and eighty thousand pounds <sighs> so um do you rent or do you own i i rent um how much you pay do you mind me asking i pay 1100 a month yeah do you live do you live on your own or do you live with someone i live with someone else i live two, with someone else two of you two of us nice yeah and do you pay equal rent so is that a we do. I mean, it's you know, it's a lot less for him. It's the same number, but it's a lot less for him. Oh, because he, oh, he earns more. Yeah, he's right. like, yeah, it's in data. All oh, right, nice. All right, cheers, mate. I appreciate. It. Nice one, man. So, why is London so expensive? And one of the reasons is because of this: the River Thames, a giant body of water flowing through any area, is going to bring it a lot of prosperity. And dating back thousands of years, this will have brought wealth to what we now call London. Back in the 17th century, London had the busiest dock in the world. So you can imagine all that wealth coming in here, the trade, the transportation, and building all these grand things around it, bringing life to the city. So London had this great location right next to the Thames. But then in even more recent history, in the 70s and the following decades in the United Kingdom, we shut down all our heavy industry and we moved away all our manufacturing and we shifted to a country that was focused on the financial service industry. We stopped doing things and making things and it was all number based. And that was based from here in London. London dominated that. So people just followed the money, businesses followed the money. And for a long time, everything has just been operating out of London. I guess it's changing kind of recently with things like Media City moving up to Manchester and uh, a lot of new train lines are opening up to try and spread it out from London, but it's still London dominated really, which means the prices just rise and rise and rise here. So with those decades that I've just been talking about following the 70s and the 80s, banks began offering big mortgages, low interest, big mortgages. So people were suddenly able to buy the demand was there and house prices just followed suit. So you've got a lot of foreign money in London as well. You've got a lot of Russian money, Saudi money, because people think it's an indestructible market. It's a safe place where you can buy up massive amounts of property and it's never gonna dip. It's never gonna fall. It's gonna be a good investment, which just means that you're taking away property from people that actually need a house. So I'm at the next viewing now. It's in a few minutes. Uh, this area is called Leighton. Near, I've not heard of it, but the nearest place I had heard of was like near Hackney. It's not too far from Hackney. So let's have a look around this place. I think this is on for 475. Um, so let's see what it's like. So I just got chatting to neighbour there. He bought in 1991 here. And I asked how much did he pay back then and he just said very, very low. He said his is now worth 695. And one across the road over there went for 750 last month. So I'm interested to see this one. It's, I've just checked, it's 480, that's auction. Needs a bit of work doing to it, but wow. Oh my Lord, it's so expensive. So here is the listing online for this property. And as you can see, it's on for £480,000. Now, this is one of the auction houses, so who knows what it'll sell for, but let's go have a look round. So you come in and you've got a living room on your right, or a bedroom, whatever you want to do with it, which is in pretty good shape. It's a decent-sized room. Apart from the carpet, there's nothing really wrong with it. Roof looks fine. Then you come back out into the hallway. A little bit of damage to the carpet there again, just get a new carpet. And then you're back into like another living room, good space here, a few marks on the wall, but really nothing to worry about. And then you're through into the kitchen, which is probably the biggest kitchen I've seen so far today. It's a bit messy, but nothing really wrong with it. You've got some weird cappuccino coffee wallpaper here, but yeah, each to their own. You'd want to get new counter cupboards as well. These are just old and a bit worn, but apart from that, all right. Then through here and you're into another room where you've got a window looking back on one of them living spaces you've got and like a storage space for like your fridge, washing machine, utility kind of room and then I looked up and there's a hole in the roof. Seems to be a common theme with some of these houses here, holes in the roofs. And then went to the back to see if we could get out into the garden but the key wasn't working. So this is a view from the kitchen of your garden. It's a good space, pretty good space. Uh, I then went down into the cellar I went down here with my torch because the lights weren't working. It's just a cellar. Quite a good space, though, if you've got things to store, like tools or whatever. But yeah, it's a cellar. Upstairs now and into the bathroom. I was a bit cautious walking in here because I remember there was a hole in the floor somewhere and I couldn't quite remember where it was. Just needs a clean in here, really. But it's a decent size, to be fair. Three bed up here. So this is your first bedroom. You've got some interesting wallpaper again, this time a butterfly theme. But yeah, it's an all right size room, to be fair. Strange little light cover there, but yeah, just a bit of paintwork needs sorting, nothing major. Here's the view as well of your garden from this bedroom. 
into the second bedroom up here, and more interesting wallpaper, this time a Manhattan theme. Interesting wallpaper choices in this house, each room is different. But another good room to be fair, then into your final bedroom, which was probably the best in the house. Looks decent, good size, nice view, and most importantly, no shit wallpaper. So what do you think of that place? That one's on 480, but wow, it did have a garden. I wonder what the statistic is. I wonder if having a garden in London just adds like 150 grand onto your house price. I bet it's something silly like that. See, I remember the last place I was living in London. It was 650 pounds for a room and that was in a two bed flat where we turned the living room into another bedroom and rented that out so it was a three bed but we didn't have a shared living room and I remember thinking oh I'm just done with London moved back up north got a flat with my mate Jay two bed flat half an hour away from Manchester and the whole thing was £450 split between two and I had two rooms I had a bedroom and an office you could have had another person in there you could have had £450 split between three people it's just crazy when you think of it like that. I personally find it a much nicer pace of life up north. Don't have to work as hard, much nicer quality of life. All comes down to cheap rent really. Well, cheaper rent, the countryside. Look, I just love the countryside. I like being in woods. I don't like cities at all. So up north is perfect for me. But also friendlier people up north. Out of all the films that I've made in all the different locations I've gone to, I have never struggled as hard to get chatting to people than I have in London. It's really weird. No one says hi to each other. I'm honestly walking around saying hi to people and people are looking at me like I'm mad. I like this here. I've just got to this bit where they're building a whole new high rise. Cranes. But it says on the side of it. Made me laugh. Leading the way in sustainability. 253 new energy efficient homes. And then down here, with over 40 new trees. <laughs> oh wow. They're giving you 40 trees. Love it. So I said I was only going to be looking at houses and I thought it was a house I was looking at here but I think it's a flat. A lie, it's this one here. So here's the listing online for this property. It's on for 395. It's the smallest one I think I'm seeing. And look at this, some terrible wallpaper. We might be in luck for some more terrible wallpaper. So here we go, into the kitchen. Really small kitchen and it's a total mess. I don't get why people trying to sell a house don't just tidy it up a little bit and make it nice. But then again, maybe in London you don't have to. You can leave it a tip and it'll still sell. But into the living room now and look, yay, we've got some leopard print wallpaper, possibly the worst wallpaper of the day. Just look at that. What a living room. But even better than the wallpaper, check out these mini chandeliers, mini grand chandeliers. Here's your outside space. Pretty decent to be fair, bit of potential with that I'm guessing. And then back inside to the hallway. It is small downstairs. Oop, there's another chandelier. Then we go upstairs and look, we've got sparkly stairs. Just incredible. And also parrot wallpaper. Check this out. Jungle style wallpaper. A few different animals there. Upstairs onto the bathroom. But first, there we have it. There's the hole in the roof. They've all got one. Now into the bathroom. It's pretty small. It's pink. It's colourful, it needs a lot of work doing to it, but yeah, pretty basic in there. Now into the separate toilet. Now I've got to say, I actually did love the tiles in here. I thought they were great. I didn't like the floor, but I thought the tiles were pretty sick, to be fair. I do like them. Into the first bedroom, and it's an alright size. Strange wallpaper again, but yeah, it's an alright size bedroom. Not much to talk about really in here. And you've got one more bedroom in this house, so it's a two bed, and that's in here. Again, terrible wallpaper, but average size room now over onto the left there'd been an issue with the roof in this house and it had been fixed but not fully completed so there'd be a lot of work to do here as well so yeah there we have it what do you think 395 for that place it was small it was boxy but the location it's a pretty good location it's uh, got a garden as well so it's got that and to be fair out of all these ones i'm viewing i'm not sure what the auction ones will sell for the one that was on for 300 grand at auction but we'll see but that might be the cheapest property at the moment that you can find in london central london 395 for a house let me know what you thought of it could you live there in the little boxy house do you rent or do you own your property um, i'm renting in acton pay 940 uh, but they just uh, they've just increased it by 100 pounds the, the the flat i stay in the the regulations say that only five people are allowed to live there because we've got one bathroom. Um, but they've actually, I think it's about nine people staying there at the moment. Nine people? So a lot of people sharing rooms. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not 
a great place to stay. Well, thank you for that, mate. Nice yeah. one. So this isn't really a film about cheap property at all. It's a film about how unaffordable it has become to live in London, how hard it is to get on the ladder, and the options that are available to you to live in if you've not got much money. So that there is Grenfell Tower, a block of flats which in 2017 burned down. That's all that remains of it there. It burned for over 60 hours and killed 72 people and destroyed the lives and homes of many, many more. And that is a direct result of what's happening in London with unaffordable housing and unregulated housing. When people can't afford housing in the city, in a city like London, when brick and mortar housing is just so crazily high, people move into places like Grenfell, a block of flats which was deemed totally unsafe to live, which when it set alight, it had material in there that should not have been in there, and 72 people ended up dying. So um, it happened uh, June 2017. Uh, actually, it started to burn, and in about one and a half hour, the two thirds of the building was on fire. Wow. So what happened is it was the cladding, yeah. right? Some sort of an insulation outside. So it was because the last repair um, was like mm, 2000, 2010 or sort of, and so they had to kind of replace it, yeah, yeah. right? And of course they had an investment, kind of huge amount of money, but there were three or four people who actually put that money in, in, in their pockets, right? Yeah, yeah. So instead of get a fireproof um, cladding, they bought a cheap Chinese kind of crap, yeah, yeah. sort of. I'm not, I mean, I mean uh, in one of them kitchens on the fourth floor, uh, the fridge, um, fridge actually exploded. So it started burning inside the flat. But then all the communications were going through the wall, right? So that fire slowly get from that kitchen to the outside of the building. And then when that catch fire, that cladding, the entire building in one and a half hour was like a straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it, it, it didn't start, it, it started inside, but actually inside there was not that much fire to, yeah, be, yeah. to be able to damage that building. It was actually from outside and then it goes into every single flat. Yeah. And the thing is that there is no proper access to it so only two uh, fire trucks could get in. It just it just happened, and I mean, it's uh, it's, it's 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 really it's ah behind the building there is a memorial kind of a wall. Oh, yeah, it, there is. Since the London fire, 1666, yeah, 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 yeah. right? That that was the biggest one since. So yeah, um, it's shocking. Yeah, it yeah. is shocking. Yeah, so I just got a chat to that guy there. He was a construction worker. He lives just near Grenfell. So he was telling me all about what happened what happened when it burned down. But that right there, Grenfell, is a direct result of what happens when housing is just entirely unaffordable in the city. And places like that spring up that are just unregulated, unfit for humans to live in, and then you get tragedies like that happening. It's so sad, it's really sad. Them signs on that picture there that said, this much evidence, still no charges. Just showing how hard it is to get justice for the families of what happened here. So it says here as well, there's a plaque. The Grenfell Tower Memorial Commission's promise. To those who lost their lives, we promise to never forget. To those who survived, we promise never to forget. To those who bore witness, we promise never to forget. And to the next generation, we must never forget. So I thought it'd be fitting to come and make reference to and pay my respects to the people who lost their lives and the people who suffered from the Grenfell Tower disaster. And as I was stood there at the memorial then, a guy comes over, he asked what I was doing. I said, oh, I'm just making a film about housing in London and what can happen when housing becomes unaffordable and unregulated. And he just said, oh, I lost my mum and my grandma in Grenfell. And he said, I'd just like them to stand by the memorial. So yeah, hearing directly from someone who was affected and lost family members in Grenfell. And as I say, they are the victims. That there stands as a symbol of the victims of what happens when a place like London has so much unaffordable housing and where people just have to live, have to choose unsafe places to live. Right, onwards, I've got to go back to Stratford now and it's a final viewing, which is, oh, I've got about an hour, but then I've got a really quick turnaround to try and make my train. I don't want to miss my train because it'd be well expensive. So yeah, I'm gonna to have to get a bit of a stomp on. My legs are knackered. 
Right, just had a quick pint of Guinness and a sit down because I was knackered. And let's get on to the final property, up near Stratford. So I'm for 400 grand at auction. So it's raining a bit, so I need to get my camera away. Well, let's go check it out. So here's a listing online for this property up in Stratford. And it's on for 400 grand. Again, this is an auction, so we'll see what it goes for. Here's the view from outside. Boarded up well. No one's getting in there. Nice size house, I guess. There was a saw on the doorstep, which was kind of ominous. Load of rubbish out here. Then going in, you had a living room on the left as you went in, which was a decent size, to be fair. The carpet was a total mess that I'd need redoing. And it was just grotty in here as well. Loads of stuff everywhere. Walls crumbling. Parts of the cupboards coming away. But again, not too bad size. It then led on to another living room down here. Again, just the carpet messy there. And it was the same in here. The carpet was a mess in this room as well. But two decent sized living spaces down here. And the walls were fine. There is a tiny hole in the roof. There we go. They've all got one. Through to the kitchen, which was a real mess. Definitely the messiest room I've seen today. Stuff all over the floor, stuff all over the walls, the cabinets were falling off, and it also stank in here. There was a really, really weird smell, which was very off-putting. It is a decent-sized kitchen, I guess, but would need a lot of work doing to it, completely gutting out and starting all over again. Look at that grot on the floor. And it was the same in the cupboards, it was the same in the sink. Look at that growing, disgusting. Same under the sink, so much mould, so much to do in here. As I said, just gut it all out, complete clean, that's what you'd have to do. Going outside, again, mess out here. So much rubbish just chucked everywhere. It was an all right size garden, I guess. It was a bit of space. But the issue with this is, behind this fence, just over there, is the train line. So that's going to be really noisy. And also, it does come with a bottle of milk in a tree. Then, back into the house. And there's a cellar again in this place. So I checked it out with my torch. Again, messy down here. But it's a decent sized cellar for storing stuff. Just needs a bit of a clean. Then back upstairs, as you can see, the carpet here needs redoing. It's a three bed up here. You've got a bathroom with a separate toilet. So this is a toilet. There was a hole up there as well in the roof. Then into the bathroom with the bath, which again, the room needed a lot of work doing to it. The roof in here was a total mess as well. That would need sorting. But yeah, pretty decent size. Then into the first bedroom, which again, floorboards need sorting. There's stuff all over the walls. But I guess it's a decent sized room to be fair. Here's the view. And I was like, oh, I hope a train goes past. And it did. So a train went past and it was noisy. So you would have to put up with that. Then through to the second bedroom up here, which was a decent size. Bit of work on the floor, bit of work on the paint, but nothing too bad to be fair. Then into the final bedroom, which was a really decent size but as you can see it's just messy everywhere floorboards would need redoing there's holes all over the wall and as you can see here there's a bit where the bricks there exposed brick so i'm guessing it'd need a replaster and then this door in a cupboard which felt like it had been kicked from the inside out which would need sorting out so there we have it the last property viewing wow it was a good one as well bit of a mess in there i like it when they're like that and on for four hundred thousand. now there was another dude walking around um and he seemed to know a lot more about property than i do and he was saying that they're, they're asking over on that. But again, the auction's coming up soon. So before I finish the film, hopefully I'll have put in what it went for. Right, so that's it. Back up north we go. I'm looking forward to it. I apologize as well for the lack of diversity in the people that I interviewed and got chatting to. I did try. I spoke to so many more people. A lot of people just ignored me. A lot of people spoke and had great things to say, but just didn't want to be on camera. But yeah, those that did, it did seem to be white, young males. Just got ignored again. What fun, it's been really interesting to come down here and see these properties. Um, I saw one as well, well I was meant to see one that was on for £360,000 which would have been the cheapest house but while I was down the estate agent got in touch and said that that's sold. Unfortunately we didn't get to see that but we did see some, let me know, let me know what you think of them, which was your favourite. Um, I'm going to get back up north now where it's nice, cheap, friendly, people want to talk to me up there. So a couple of people have been in touch as well asking how they can support the channel. Now, it's hard times at the moment, so you should be looking after yourself. My videos are just a lot of fun. You watching them is enough. But if you feel like you are in a position where you want to support and you are able to, I've set up a Patreon. It'll, the link will be below. And if you're in a position where you can and want to, it's greatly appreciated. Everything I get from it, I'll put back into the content. I'm doing that with my normal job at the moment anyway. I enjoy it so much. And if you want to, it'd be greatly appreciated. But as I say, look after yourself first. My videos are just fun. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. So I thought I'd just finish this film by showing you what 500 grand can get you for a house up north. So this is a half a million pound semi-detached house up north in Lancashire. So let's go in and have a little look round. Really good sized garden there. Nice little allotment at the back. And going inside, check this out. You've got a grand staircase and you've got a jukebox. 
for all your jukeboxing needs, just look at that. You've got one living room down here, and then another reading room slash living room over here. Nice big kitchen. Upstairs, this is a five bed, I think. Yeah, five bed. So you've got five really good sized bedrooms, and then a nice office room as well upstairs. Good bathroom with a freestanding bath, and a garage, which is probably bigger than most of the houses I saw down in London, with a utilities room and a place just to keep all your stuff, be that bikes or a gym. And there's your garden. So I thought it'd be fun as well just to end this film by showing you a £1.1 million house up north. So this is in Halifax, which is just near Leeds. And when you compare it to those houses I was showing you earlier, and the average price in London, remember, to the west was £1 million. And to the east, it was £750,000 for the average. And this, up north, is a £1.1 million house. Just compare the two. Just look at this place. It is absolutely stunning. Comes with its own treasure chest. Just look at the elegance of this building. But yeah, do it yourself. Go online, search for a 900 grand property, say, in London, and then compare it to a 900 grand property up north. It will blow your mind. Just check this place out. And you know it's fancy when it comes with a painting of the house. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.